So as we see a new year in, 2024 saw the end of life of Windows Mail and Calendar. Now that basically means that you will no longer receive security updates or support for the applications. It also meant that as of the 31st of December 2024, you were unable to send and receive emails using the app. Now there is a glimmer of hope in the new Outlook application, which hopes to bring together your mail, your contacts and your calendar all under one roof. And it's a free application that is available to you in Windows 11. So let's jump on a PC and take a look. So to get started, let me show you what happens when you fire up Windows Mail. So when you open up Windows Mail, you'll see it says up here, support for Windows Mail, Calendar and People will end on the 31st of December, 2024. And you can click this link here to learn more. And over to the right hand side, you'll see this try the new Outlook. So if you go ahead and click this link, this will uh, bring up the information from the Microsoft website, which goes on to explain that the Windows Live Mail has now been end of life since December the 31st, 2024 and is being replaced with this new Outlook. Now what I want to do straight away is debunk a myth here and that is that this new Outlook replaces the Microsoft 365 subscription home and business Outlook which is completely not true. This is a lighter, much cut down version of Outlook and is not to be confused with the Outlook that you get with that Microsoft 365 subscription. Anyway, so this information here will give you a little bit more uh, in-depth information about why they've ended support for the Windows Mail and the Canada application. I obviously will put this link to this document in the description down below. Anyway, let's move it on. Let's take a look at what this actually means. So if we go back into our Windows Mail and if we come over here and we click this try the new Outlook, this will fire up the new Outlook application. Now, before we take a look at the new uh, Outlook, what I want to do is also explain to you that moving your email account from one service to the next has got some dangers and complications. You may lose some of your information. And we always normally tell people to back up their uh, files and their documents before they make that transition. Now, there are some caveats to that. And one of those caveats is if you're using an email service that uses IMAP, then most of your information will be stored on the email server. Things like your calendar and your contacts, it's always advisable to export those in whatever method you like the most or consult a professional IT consultant. Now, when it comes to your contacts, however, because that is the most critical thing, we will show you at the end of this video how you can go about and export your contacts in a file format that can then be imported into the new Outlook. So when you're ready, let's go ahead and click on the Try the New Outlook. Once you click that link, it will fire up the new Outlook, which I've got to say looks pretty clean. There are a few little things in here that you might want to take into consideration. So you can see down the left-hand side here, we have now got email, calendar, people, groups, to do, and then we've got these links down here to Word, Excel and PowerPoint. Now these are access to the online version of Word, Excel and PowerPoint. So if you don't have a Microsoft 365 subscription, uh, what Microsoft do is they give you a free subscription with five gigabytes of cloud storage and access to Word, Excel and PowerPoint online. You can use those applications without subscribing to the Microsoft 365 um, ecosystem. Let's take a little look around this new Outlook. You can see down here we've got the usual inbox, sent, draft, and so forth down here. These are your favorites, and these are all your usual folders down on the left-hand side here. As you can see at the bottom, you can always add another account into this, so you can obviously have more than one account in this interface. If you want to generate a new email, we just click on this new email button here, and it will fire up a window like that. We can put obviously the email address in, subject line, and content in there. So, so far, this looks pretty much a similar sort of look and feel that you would have with the previous mail and also Outlook. One of the other things that uh, it states on the Microsoft website is that there's a bit of a limitation when it comes to how you want this interface to look like. So if we go over to these three dots here and go down to where it says customize, we can see that we have a whole bunch of things here that we can do to make our new Outlook have a feel that you're happy with. So there are a few little bit of customizations that you can do on here, but it is limited to what you can do. 
so it's not a full interface but at least you get a little bit of customization perfect for most home users you can also come over to view over here and on the view you've got a whole bunch of other customizations you can do so if we go for example to this layout uh, button here and choose the ribbon we can go to classic ribbon and then you get this look and feel like this now I like this this is quite nice because it helps a lot of users so if we go for example down here where it says reading pane now I don't like to have a reading pane I like just to see a list of my emails so you can hide the reading pane so that all you have is just a list of your emails so again if you've got over to the view you can go into into your ribbon and then you can change this reading pane option here and you can change it how you want some people like it I don't like it so I'm just turning it off another feature is folder pane so if we drop that down and you can see that we've got folder list and favorites that relates to what's on the left hand side here so if we go for example to favorites I can hide favorites so that we don't see that or obviously I can bring it back on by clicking it back on same thing with the folder list I can hide the folder list or I can show the folder list so there is a little bit of customization here what you could do with the new outlook uh, which I think is great for most users most users just don't want to go into over, anything over the top this will be perfectly fine again for most home users you can also click on this stack icon here which looks like a layer of pancakes and if you click on that that will also hide that left hand side menu there now a lot of people have said to, to us well I don't know if I want to use this new outlook so what choices do I have well there are a few choices that you can do and we'll cover that in a second but what we would like to say is that this new outlook is quite a nice feature brings all the applications together in one space and I think it's quite neat it's quite tidy it's it's really clean and I would really give it a go so if you don't want to use this what are your options well your options are you can go to whoever your service provider is and see what software they provide now most of them don't provide any particular software but they will provide you access via webmail and what webmail is is you would use a ordinary browser to log into that mail service from your provider whether that be bt internet or uh, talk talk or whoever and you will be able to access your emails via the web now we don't recommend using webmail only as a secondary recourse and that's because it's less secure there are mistakes that you can make quite easily and sometimes people get really lost with the whole online web interface so if you don't want to use webmail or the new outlook what other options do you have well you do have a couple of uh, suggestions one of which we recommend is using the Mozilla Thunderbird now you can get access to this through our resources page on our website we've got that in a link below but if we take a quick look at what that offers you this is another free open source piece of software you just go ahead and download it it's available for Windows Linux as well as Mac and now it's also available for Android now obviously we're not going to go through it right now but if you want us to do a video on that in the future please let us know in the comments below however that is a great alternative than using either new outlook or webmail and if that's not enough to whet your appetite don't forget you've also got things like Gmail and Mailbird clients however my personal choice which is not a free option will always be the Outlook full version that comes with Microsoft 365 but gives you the absolute best tools for your email contacts calendar with integration into other services as tools as well so what I'm going to do now is show you how to import your contacts using this application okay so to import our contacts we need to go over here to where it says people click on that go over to where it says manage contacts and then go import contacts now I have already got my contacts exported and I've got them on my desktop so if we just go and browse now to where I've got those which is on my desktop and open those up we can go ahead now and click this button here that says import okay so this will now upload my contacts into the new outlook and as you can see it's populating those into my email client once finished we just click on close and you can see there I have now got all my contacts and that's what you can do if your contacts have not been imported correctly into the new software so that's it for today about migrating from the old Windows mail to the new outlook if you've got any suggestions about any alternative software that you would use other than the ones we recommended put them down in the comments below 
So my name's Rob from Unless Computer Services. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.